because rent is guaranteed it's guaranteed from the local authorities it's guaranteed from a housing association it's benefiting from passive income within property now within my business i have approached this slightly different whereby i have set what's good be hustlers welcome back to my channel if you're new to my channel i go by the name of b hence the b and b talks i create content around entrepreneurship self-development mindset and a little bit of lifestyle with my vlogs i hope you'll be sticking around by clicking that subscribe button along with that notification bell so you're always notified when i upload a new video but also go ahead and give this video a thumbs up because it's about to be a good one and of course if you do have any comments or questions throughout this video go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below and i'll be sure to answer them but enough of the intro let's get straight into today's video so many of you have been waiting for this video where I delve into the social housing strategy and also share with you guys how I implement the social housing strategy in my business. So today is the day and I'm going to break it down. Of course, it's fashion on here for me to give you an example with it. So today you'll see that I'm in a different environment. This property that I'm in, it's specifically been purpose built to enable me to implement the social housing strategy within my business. So I'll be showing you this property and also walking you through what we've done with this property when we carried out the refurbishment for specifically this strategy. So what is social housing? Well, basically, it's just another strategy within property that you can implement in your business. And with this particular strategy, unlike when we have the normal HMOs, for example, where we are accommodating professionals with social housing, it's a little bit different whereby you may potentially be housing vulnerable people. This could be both young and adults. It could be uh, care leavers. It could be rough sleepers. It could be mothers and babies um, or what they call mother and baby units. But also it could be that your clientele have been discharged straight from the NHS and have been brought to you. So that's just kind of give you an idea of the clientele. And obviously there's a long list of individuals that fall under this category. Over time as well, I'll be creating more videos on this specific topic, this specific strategy, because there's so much to it. And believe me, I will not be able to cover everything within one video. Also, I would encourage that you stick around and watch this video till the end because I'm going to be giving you guys an update on that 12 bed house that I vlogged. But anyways, social housing. Now with this particular strategy, there's different ways to approach it. You can be somebody who has a normal family home that you give to organizations such as a housing association or other charitable organizations where they'll take it off you for about three to five years. Now the good thing about that approach, that's probably the closest experience you are going to ever have when it comes to um, benefiting from passive income within property. Because the truth is, passive income within property is a bit debatable. But with this particular strategy, um, this is a possibility. Because rent is guaranteed. It's guaranteed from the local authorities. It's guaranteed from a housing association. When you've handed over your property to a housing association, for example, you don't have to have any involvement with regards to the operation of the property in any way, shape or form. It's hands off. Now, within my business, I have approached this slightly different whereby I have set myself as the service provider. We have a business that provides housing to vulnerable individuals directly. So to give you a better context of what I'm talking about, I've brought you along to see one of my setups that is dedicated to catering to the social housing strategy or what we call supported living accommodation. Now I'm gonna break it down as to why this particular property we identified as being fit for purpose for this particular strategy and also use it as an example to give you a much better picture of how, if you're somebody who's interested to implement this strategy, what you have to think about when it comes to setting this operation. Because Lord knows it is a challenging one, but it is 
long term much more rewarding anyways back to the property so as you come into the property you'll see that we created a little lobby area we thought it was a nice little touch when it comes to setting up a social housing uh, property now when it comes to identifying properties that would be fit for purpose for supported living location absolutely matters guys so with this particular property we had to carry out a location analysis depending on the clientele that you'll be targeting long term term is it maybe a nice quiet area will be something you'd have to think about now the good thing about this particular property for example is it had the space at the front of the property that allowed us to add this ramp that basically makes it much more um, disabled friendly now this is again something you have to think about when you're trying to find a property that would be fit for purpose or at least if you are going to find a property and it may not be fit for purpose at the beginning but it gives you the space to make it or turn it into a property that would be suitable for this type of strategy now you have to bear in mind the people that will be living in this property they need some level of care and support we were essentially creating the property to make it as friendly as possible accessible as possible but also feel nice and airy and light what we've done is some rooms we have turned into for example this one into an office which essentially the operation will require for members of staff to be on site 24 7 this becomes their little quarters they have a space where they can do their work and also the maximum number of people that we want to be able to accommodate within this property who will be of high needs um, will be up to four individuals. You can either have supported living without accommodation or supported living with accommodation. But as you can see with this particular property, the operation that we've gone for is supported living with accommodation. Supported living with accommodation simply means that you are providing care, support, but with a roof over their head as well. Another thing that we did within this particular property is we have allocated spaces whereby individuals that be living here can isolate themselves, maybe just have a little cool out space, chill out space similar to this one. So as you can see this little room here, we just simply put a nice little sofa. We have to ensure that we've taken the necessary safety measures or implemented safety measures, but also we're carrying out risk assessments and all that good stuff. So yeah, this is just to give you guys the lowdown of how we have to not only find a property that will be fit for purpose, but if it isn't fit for purpose, we have to then turn it into a property that is fit for purpose. Another thing that we've done for this particular property is added extra benefits. For example, um, in the back garden, we created allotments because as part of the service, and this is where essentially supported living comes into play. The idea is that it's not just the accommodation, you are providing care um, that is much more than just someone sleeping in this property or uh, you know being accommodated in this property you're providing further services that allow them to interact if it's young people for example preparing them with life skills oh another thing that we had to do um, was apply for planning permission to change the use of the property from a residential to what it's now regarded as a facility for specifically supported living so now this particular property has its classification changed from a c3 to now a c2 i will leave a link to the planning portal if you want to just kind of familiarize yourself with the classifications uk classifications when it comes to planning and uh, change of use and all that good stuff so moving on the next thing we had to do once we found the property uh, set it up that way it's fit for purpose is ensured we had all our compliance in place when it comes to compliance if you're going to approach the first method that i highlighted then you don't necessarily need to care about compliance because it's not you that's going to be operating social housing or supported living accommodation now with me with the whole hands-on approach which we have here what we did was re-registered with CQC. They are the regulatory body of health and social care within England and they basically hold us accountable for the level of quality and service we offer and provide 
in an establishment or facility like this one to our service users. The good thing about registering with a body like CQC is that they were able to highlight things that we had to improve in order to bring it to a more high quality facility. Now there's other things we've also had to implement policies that also again fall under compliance. So part of that as well is ensuring that the staff are trained, they have been DBS checked for example, all this falls under compliance as well from an operational level. So that is that on this particular property and I just want to kind of show you guys how I go about implementing implementing social housing strategy in my business. But not to worry, this is not the last video on social housing strategy, supported living strategy. I will be creating more videos in the near future. I will be creating videos on CQC and being compliant. Uh, how to identify properties that would be suitable for this specific strategy. For example, costs that can be associated depending on which model of business you choose to um, you choose to approach and all that good stuff. So you might want to stick around by hitting that subscribe button and of course that notification bell as I always say. So yeah, this is merely just an introduction into how I implement this strategy within my business and give you guys an idea. But as I said at the beginning of this video, I'll be giving you guys an update of that 12 bed house. Let's get into it, shall we? So if you've been following me on this journey in the life of a property entrepreneur, in a previous vlog, I brought you guys along and we went to view a 12 bed property. I would have set it up exactly as I've done with this particular property. And also I would have gone through exactly the same steps that I have highlighted in this video in order to basically get it into a level of uh, being compliant, but also making sure that it's fit for purpose. But the lowdown is he wants way too much for it. What we have suggested is that he meets us at 2,500, which we think is fair because we have had to factor in there things such as Corona, because that is now gonna be a normal part of life. Mind you, being such a massive property as well, it means that we will have way more overheads to cover that property, i.e. staff on site. The more individuals that you're offering supported living accommodation to, the more you have to add staff to cater to those individuals. And that particular property is huge, Yes, it was all in good condition and pretty much ready to go. But when we looked at the numbers, it just wasn't working when we factored all our expenses and operation. That is it on that update. And that brings me to the end of today's video. I really do hope you found this video somewhat insightful. Should you have any questions, just drop them down in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer your questions. In the meantime, go ahead and give this video a big massive thumbs up because I think I've done a great job in trying to crunch this really complex object. <laughs> While you're at that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button along with that notification bell. And as always, continue being hustlers.